Hey, welcome to Some Guy's Garage. We're back in the basement today. I've just completed a demo, so it's time for an update. And I'll walk you through what I've done and what's coming up next. If you haven't seen part one, make sure you check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. This is the first update video since I got started and showed you guys all the plans. So we'll take a look at what I've actually done in terms of demo and getting this thing ready to actually build. So just one cool thing before we get started. I had some old shelving from the garage. I think I showed it in my garage tour video, so check that out. But some old shelving and I made it into a couple new stands. This one's on wheels, so I can wheel it around to wherever I need to actually do stuff and work from. And that one's more of a sitting or standing height one. And this one's an old one that I built years and years and years ago that it came from my old house, actually. But nice to just have something to get the tools up off the floor and give me something at a nice height to work at. Um, it, whether I'm standing or need to sit or stand on top of it or whatever, it just gives me some nice work surfaces. So if you are finishing the basement, it's worth spending the, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour to build something to put your tools on and work on when you need to. Uh, it's made it a lot more comfortable even up to this point. And you can see I have a mess of tools already sitting around on them. So just one neat little thing that I did when I was getting started. Okay, first let's talk about duct work. So... There was a bunch of ducts that were kind of down in this area and they actually dropped the corners as well here and here. I've tidied a bunch of that up. So the one duct over here that used to drop to the corner, I've lifted up over the ceiling in front of the sliding doors. So it just kind of provides an air curtain there. The other thing I did was the duct, this is for the main floor here. I took it off the side and turned it to go up. It was a bit of a pain to cut in this corner, but what that does is it definitely cleans up my bulkhead. So all the way along here now, is just a straight bulkhead. There's no um, ducts dropping down, so it's just a straight bulkhead, nice and clean in that sense. And the other thing I had done was, I had a mechanical company come do this, but the return air here used to come along just this way along here and then cut under the ducts this way. So I had them come and reroute it a little bit. So this time now it, or now it goes kind of down into the furnace on the other side. As I showed in the plans in the last video, I plan to put a little kitchenette here. And so having those ducts out of the way lets me put my wall kind of right here without anything in the way. So this side of the basement ends up having a lot of clean um, lines for all the duct work and makes it really easy to do. The other thing I did was straighten this duct out. So it used to be tight to the beam. I've moved it over and just given it a straight run here. That's gonna let me put the, there's a wall to the closet. That'll put the dividing wall right through that gap. And again, just kind of clean up the overall ductwork and bulkhead situation. So this, the black one here, which is for the HRV and this return duct, will both end up being inside the closet for the most part and kind of make it so that this room doesn't have as much bulkheads and the wall here that's kind of dividing this area will be nice and clean as well. And similarly, this duct here used to drop to the corner as well. So I've picked that up and put it in front of the window as well here. And that gets this corner cleaned up. Unfortunately, that one duct run is the only one that's kind of going to be a little dip underneath. I'm going to have to bulkhead that corner in, but that's really the only spot that it drops down in kind of that awkward sort of position. And the last thing I did with the duct work is just add another um, air vent here. So there wasn't one in this room. This is the laundry room back here. Um, so I've added another air vent. I am going to have to probably extend it out and drop it down a little bit more. The light was in the way from where I wanted it. So I'll have to make a few adjustments to it, but for the moment, this is the just an extra air duct because this will be a closed room um, with a door just over here, which wouldn't have been here in the past. So I figured there should be at least a little bit of airflow into this area. So the next thing I did was remove all of the existing kind of insulation. There was a, um, a wall here that the builder put for insulation for the steps and the foundation. I've removed that. I will build it back, but I wasn't happy with the way it was done. Builders, you know how they can be. Um, but I also pulled all the blanket insulation all the way around. So obviously you can't put drywall on blanket insulation. And if I want to finish all of this in, then I needed to pull that out. And honestly, blanket insulation is pretty awful. It's basically the cheapest way that they can do to make code, but it's really not the nicest way to do things. So I've pulled all of that out and now have a bare foundation. And so to re-insulate the foundation, I'm going to actually start with uh, XPS foam board. So all of the concrete foundation that I just showed, that's all going to get covered first in a, a layer of, this is just one inch, just given the clearances I have. Um, and it's above code for what I need to do, but I'm going to add one inch foam board on the entire foundation. So to prepare for the foam board, I've actually had to grind parts of the foundation. So this is a poured concrete foundation and 
kind of at every gap in the forms, there's going to be a bit of a ridge and stuff. So I took a grinder and actually smoothed out most of the foundation wall. This is primarily the grinder I used. It's just a four inch diamond wheel on a cordless grinder actually and worked pretty well. It actually bites really fast into the concrete and was able to remove it quickly. Um, I also, as part of grinding, I did use this for a bit of the wall, but this was mainly for the floor. I'll touch on that in a moment. So the thing about grinding concrete inside though is it's a terrible mess. Um, most of that just turns into dust and gets into the air. And so I was wearing a respirator, but the entire basement was cloudy. I had exhaust fans running and there's only so much you could do. So, um, half the time was spent grinding. The other half the time was spent cleaning everything up out of the basement. Uh, I don't know quite if there would be another better way to do it. I have a dust collector. You can kind of see it over here in the corner. I was trying to run that. Uh, I have a couple shop vacs, was trying to use those. Um, the shroud on the bigger grinder here worked okay, but not on the walls. And this was very heavy to hold up. You can get smaller ones for five inch wheels. And maybe that would have been a little bit better hooked up to the shop vac, but um, just it was awkward to hold it on the walls and it only gives you so much clearance to get down to the floor and up to the rim joist. If you ever do undertake that, I'd highly recommend respirator and be prepared for a really big mess. So the other bit of grinding I did was on the floor and that's what the big grinder was for and worked really well in that situation because you could keep it flat to the floor, hooked up to one of the shop vacs with a dust bag in it. I was able to grind the floor. So most of these cracks here you can see, um, they kind of run every which way were a little bit raised in the middle of them. So everywhere there was a crack, there was a bit of a raise in the floor. And so I went through and grinded all of that down. There was quite a bit of it, unfortunately, but just trying to get a slightly more level floor. I'll probably still do self-leveling, but by taking that high point out, it's just gonna minimize the amount of self-leveling I need. So the only other little bit of concrete prep, and I still have to deal with this, but not immediately, is in a few spots you can see here, they have foam board next to the foundation, um, just below grade and it kind of runs all the way along, but the concrete here that they put over top was thin and cracking. So I've chipped out the rest of it. This I'm probably going to have to cut down a little bit of the foam as well, but I will be refilling this as well in along these corners. And you can see it runs pretty much all the way around down this way as well and around all the foundation that isn't the stepped foundation, um, but is that kind of grade level. So probably what happened is when they set the foam and poured the floor, the foam was a little high and maybe just to try and maximize the amount of thermal break as well that it's providing. But the concrete here was just in terrible shape. So I'm going to have to redo that and I'll use some sort of non shrink that'll fill and hopefully not crack again. The next thing I did was repair some cracks in the foundation. Um, this one in particular, and this is the only one, had every once in a while a little bit of moisture getting in here. It would get damp if we got the right kind of rain from the right direction. So obviously before you finish the basement, you don't want any water coming in. So I've done a crack injection here. So this is a uh, an epoxy and then there were a little, and I'll show a picture of it as well, but there's these little standoffs that you put here and then inject foam into the foundation to seal that crack. These have all been sealed up and then I had enough left over that I came back and although we've never had any signs of water here or here, I just used a little bit of the epoxy. I didn't do the injection here, but I used the epoxy to seal up these cracks a little bit more just in case. And I had the extra material. Also, there's another one on the other side here and uh, another one in the corner as well here that I also, um, these ones I did do the injection on. Again, they've never been damp, but these ones are a little closer down towards grade. Um, given what's going on outside here at the side of the house. So I did the crack injection with the foam here and here as well, um, just to be safe, right? Like there hasn't ever been water, but there was a crack there at the steps of the foundation, which tends to happen, you know, where you have that right angle, the foundations will relieve their stress by cracking. And so having foam injection and epoxy here, will just make sure that there's never an issue with water in this corner either. So a couple other things worth noting. Uh, a lot of people might say this is excessive amounts of demolition. You could have left a lot of this and um, started from what the builder left off. I don't like to do that. I like to see what's going on and be able to fix things. And case in point, there were a few odd things that I found that the builder did. Up here in this joist cavity, hopefully you can see it there, um, there's actually a vent that is not sealed to the outside. So they kind of cut a hole, it looks like, and then put the piece back in and strapped it back down. 
I think just based on what I have in plans, this was supposed to be an HRV vent, but they ended up putting the HRV vents here and here. So I'm not too sure why they cut the hole on the other side to begin with, but there's stuff like this that if I hadn't demoed everything, I wouldn't have seen that and I couldn't seal it up. So that that's one thing. Another thing I'm able to do is seal stuff up. So for instance, right here, there's a gap um, between the sill gasket that's on the, this is the actual structure of the house, but this sill gasket is pretty loose and um, goes all the way over to the sheathing. So you can see the sheathing on the backside of that without some insulation in there. So I'm able to seal stuff like this up, which, you know, if I had left the wall that was here before, I wouldn't have been able to see that and then seal it and you know, it improves the efficiency of the home. So here's another thing I found. This is part of the central vac system, and that goes to an outlet on the side of the house. It was never actually hooked up. So that, this is literally how it looked when I pulled the insulation out of that uh, joist cavity. The pipe goes and just comes to a dead end, and it's not even in the clamp that they put there. The central vac comes down over here, um, just behind the furnace, but that was never hooked up. So another thing, had I not gutted the basement, down to this level, I probably would have never seen that. And if I had ever gone to use the central vac outlet that's at the side of the house, it wouldn't have worked. So just little things like this is why you go through gutting the basement. It takes a little bit more effort, but you do find the mistakes and issues and have a chance to deal with them. All right, and funnily enough, for next steps, we're gonna talk about the stairs. Bad joke, I know. The stairs themselves, I have about four inches here of space between the foundation and the staircase itself with me doing one inch foam on the foundation and then a three and a half inch regular studded wall in front, I don't have enough space. So I've actually ordered a new set of stairs that's a couple inches narrower. So if I didn't go with the narrower stairs, I could have just put a regular two by four wall through here, but it would have required me to step the wall in somewhere along here, maybe just past the window and not have a completely straight wall. Given this, I still wanna put foam here and I couldn't put the foam there if I left the stairs the way they were. So by narrowing the stairs, I have the room to run that wall completely straight along here, and it'll just look better. The other thing is these stairs are a little beat up. It's the builder's original um, utility grade stairs. There's holes in them here from people screwing into the stud walls. There's bangs on it with a hammer. And then the other thing I've done is gotten a different tread. So these ones have kind of the rounded bull nose already. I've gotten square noses so that they're flat and that'll let me put vinyl plank on here, which is the plan for the flooring throughout the basement. Um, maybe some tile here, but vinyl plank over there. And so I can match that here and the vinyl plank I'm looking at has a stair nose profile so I can make the stairs look a lot nicer that way and not have to deal with the existing um, nose on the stairs. So as I mentioned earlier, I do have all the foam board here and the plan is to get that glued to all the foundation all the way around here so that I have a nice thermal break and then I can get started on framing, which will come pretty much immediately after I do the foam board. I can start framing in the outside walls all along there. So that's it for the update today. I'll do another one once I've got all the foam board up and once most of the framing is done here just to show you that. So if you're interested in seeing that, make sure you subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.